Hello, long time no see. This is the Wool Revolution podcast. It's been a little while, um, a bit over a month, I think, since the last episode of this knitting podcast. But I'm here now. I I felt like I had to reduce the pressure to not only like record, but also uh, to knit. I had some kind of inspiration overload. Uh, maybe you can recognize the feeling of being so inspired and having so much you want to knit that you kind of get paralyzed and very stressed about everything that you don't have time for, essentially. So I had to like calm down a little bit. But I have been knitting on a few things that I want to show you. I have also um, you know, since last time I have broken my rib. It's starting to uh, feel better now, but uh, I have been very um, immobile, I guess you could say. So um, there has been uh, a bit of knitting time, although I've been working like, like normal, only a bit more from home. Um, so that still takes up most of my time, of course, but um, yeah, it's not been the most exciting uh, month of February. Um, except that I turned 30, that happened a few days ago. So I'm 30 plus years old now. So that's exciting, but enough about that. I'm gonna talk about my knitting now. And um, yeah, I have two finished objects and a couple of new cast-ons. Anyway, I am wearing uh, one of my finished objects. This is a sweater that I have knit in Rauma Fivel. And uh, this is like self-drafted, uh, so I haven't really followed I haven't followed a pattern. I just uh, used my measurements and sort of um, tried to uh, estimate how many stitches to cast on and uh, and increase and decrease and such. And um, the construction I went with is a drop shoulder, as you can see here. And um, I cast on stitches for the back. I did short rows in the back I'm trying to remember but i think so yes to get the slope kind of like like this and, uh, and then i picked up stitches for the front um, shaped the neckline joined in the round and continued in the round and then i picked up for the sleeve here so very basic construction and i decided in the end to go with this and the Lucian stitch which means that every fourth row you knit one purl one and then stuck in it for the rest and uh, you can see the color here it's a very beautiful brown it is quite dark um, now because I'm like sitting opposite of the window uh, it looks very bright. Um, it looks a lot more dark and very like rich dark uh, in reality. Um, but yeah, and the yarn Rama Fivel is. Um, I talked about it uh, in previously that it felt kind of dry to knit with, or like it was hard to explain. Very dry, very airy. Uh, but it feels so nice after after washing it. Uh, really, really amazing. Yeah, it just, I really like it. It feels, even though it's a big, big sweater, it feels very light when I'm wearing it. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how much it, it weighs. I haven't, um, I haven't weighed it and I'm also not sure how many um, yarn, balls of yarn I used. Maybe 11 or 12, I'm not sure. So, um, and like 11 or 12 50 gram balls, so, um, so yeah, around like half a kilo, a bit more. Um, 
but I'm I'm super happy uh, with how it turned out. The only only issue is that it's a bit too big, and I was worried about this early on, but I felt like I had still I had come too far uh, to rip back uh, and do any changes. So. Uh, I just pushed through and it's okay like it it's nothing that stops me from wearing it or anything uh, and in fact you know I I kind of like the feeling of it being very big but in the end uh, when I was knitting the body it just took forever because uh, of how many stitches I had to work every round so like for the pleasure of knitting it I would have preferred it being a bit smaller, I guess. Um, maybe like just like five to ten centimeters, maybe um, smaller would be would be optimal. Um, but I really like the size, like of the sleeves. It's a really nice oversized fit. I decided to uh, decrease, maybe like three times along the sleeve. So not a lot actually, so it's quite quite straight, but I, I like it that way. And also I like the length of the sleeve, I guess you could say like if I'm keeping my hands down this is sort of where they end up. So um, a bit on the longer side I suppose, well I mean quite, this is quite standard I guess, standard uh, length of the sleeve. Uh, what else? Yeah, I talked about the this detail being really ooh, mm, the shoulder detail here. I really like this and um, this. Mm, there are people walking outside, and they can probably see me sitting in front of my window. And this is from picking up stitches. I um, usually, if I want to have like a seamless look, I pick up stitches like from inside of the cast on stitch of the back. Uh, but here I picked up stitches sort of underneath it, which meant that the this is sort of the pickup row that becomes more visible when you do it like that. Um, so I haven't tried that before, uh, but it worked out really well. Uh, accidentally I did the uh, decreases for the sleeve on the top of the sleeve. Normally <clears throat> normally I try to place them uh, on the bottom so that they become less visible, but it's like when the yarn is so dark and you, you have this kind of texture, um, you still can't really see it. I mean, you, you'll see it if you look closely, but it's not something that um, bothers me or anything. So that's fine. And um, for me, like if I discover a mistake that I made, maybe on one sleeve, I feel more comfortable doing the same mistake for the other sleeve. So one such thing is doing the decreases on the top of the sleeve instead of the bottom. I did that on both sleeves. And I also discovered when I was knitting on the second sleeve that I did make one mistake um, with the Andalusian stitch. There you can see. Uh, can you see it? I'm taking it off like this. What? Where is it? Yes, here. This row that I'm pointing here. You can see that the gap is a bit... Like, I've made one extra round here of stocking net. But I made the same <laughs> on both sleeves. Can you see it? In line with my mouth. Anyway, um, it's very... Like, knitted with a dark yarn, it's quite forgiving, so... I would never rip back uh, the sleeve just to correct that one tiny, uh, tiny thing. All in all, very happy, very, um, like it's very comfortable, very warm, and 
I think like my first, this is my first big oversized woolly sweater in such a thick yarn. Um, so I'm very uh, delighted about that. And uh, now, I mean, the winter is almost over, but next season I feel like I'm going to be wearing this quite a lot. And the neckline I went with very basic double folded ribbing. And the ribbing, now I can't really show you the fit of uh, the garment, but this is the ribbing. So quite a long ribbing, a one by one ribbing. And the um, tubular bind off for the sleeves and um, for all the ribbings. And a long ribbing here as well. I quite like the look of that. Um, but I recommend the yarn and uh, um, a very like easy kind of garment to draft yourself. Um, I mean, a raglan sweater is probably the easiest, but well, no, I think actually this is easier than a raglan sweater. Um, well, I don't know, it's a tie. But as always, I recommend drafting your own sweaters if you have the time um, and the willingness to take risk, I guess. <laughs> because it doesn't always turn out exactly the way you planned. But usually it's like sort of in the same ballpark as you, you would expect. And that's, for me, that's enough. Yeah, so that's one thing I have finished and the next is a hoodie. So this one. It's flaring out a little bit here. I will talk about that as well, but this is what it looks like. Maybe I could try it on for you. So <clears throat> I feel like this is the most genius genius piece of accessory ever because especially like nowadays when it's like a few degrees only a few degrees but still not that cold and uh, um, like it can be cold and windy and then you want the, the hood up but it can also be like sunny and um, quite nice during the day so um, then you can just pull it down and I think this is quite a nice look as well. So now I'm only wearing this, like I have stopped wearing like scarves and uh, hats. Um, this is basically the only accessory I wear in this area uh, these days, um, early March, <clears throat> 1st of March today actually. Um, the pattern is called Flashback Hoodie from Vitre Design. I am. Um, I cast this on uh, just um, shortly after um, I broke my rib. Um, I wasn't feeling uh, very well, and I didn't have the focus um, to work on something complicated. I just wanted something easy, nice, and um, I mean, silk mohair. It gives such a squishy and soft fabric that. You know, it, it's it's very comforting, uh, is what I'm trying to say. And <clears throat> I actually bought the, the yarn. Um, I bought a few skeins of silk mohair uh, in this event called Slakta Stashen. It's a Swedish hashtag uh, on Instagram. So every year in January, there's a whole week of people um, posting yarns that they uh, want to sell. And they use the hashtag Slakta Stashen, which translates to like get rid of the stash basically. And um, yeah, it's a good week to sell yarn and to buy uh, other people's scraps or leftovers. And I did buy um, a few silk mohair scraps. So I had one skein of this grey. One skein and a little bit extra of this silk mohair, and um, and I paired it with a strand of pergint 
in a tweed color, as you can see. Uh, I think it's called like Pergint Tweed. Um, not sure what the color is called, but it's a gray. Uh, I think they only have one gray tweed color, so should be easy to find. Um, and at first I wanted to make a brown hoodie. As you can see, I'm kind of liking the browns and I feel like a lot of people right now are knitting uh, a lot of brown um, brown stuff. But in the end I decided to go with grey. It's a bit more spring vibe feeling, I guess. And uh, soon I'll be able to start wearing my trench coat, like a classic beige trench coat, and I think this will look really nice with that. Mm. So happy with how it turned out, and it was a quick knit. I think I used like 5mm needles uh, for most of it, and then 4mm needles for this um, like double folded edge. So really quick knit, and you can probably tell kind of the construction. You start with this uh, piece up here, and then you sort of pick up stitches around it. Um, to knit this uh, long part here, and then you uh, add stitches for the front, essentially. And I had... Uh, I struggled a little bit with gauge, and I have actually tried to switch my method for doing purl stitches, just because um, I think it's called rowing out, when you have the problem of your purl stitches being larger than your knit stitches. I think that's what it's called. And I definitely have struggled with that. Um, it's mostly visible like when I knit um, stock in, stockinette stitch back and forth. You can see it on the wrong side that like every other row there's a big gap. Well, not a big gap, but it's a visible gap. And um, with this one you could also see it um, maybe the blocking actually has has um, um, has solved it. Yeah, it seems like it. Let's see if you can see something. This is where I started, and uh, no, the blocking has actually helped quite a lot. Um, but I just, uh, I thought the ribbing looked so bad because of how my pearl stitches just, yeah, it, it just didn't look good. So I switched, like I googled it a little bit, and then I switched to a method that's called, oh, uh, I think maybe like Norwegian pearl stitches or something, I'm not sure, but essentially, because I'm a continental knitter, so my normal way of knitting pearl stitches is holding the yarn in front, dig the needle inside, wrap the yarn, and then pull it out. But for this uh, new technique, you keep the yarn in the back, but you put the needle uh, on the back of the strand. So you sort of bring the yarn with you um, when you put the needle in, and then you need to like turn it around, go back around, Impossible to explain, of course, but let's just say that it's a new, it's a new technique. But now I feel like on my different projects, I switch between my two <laughs> styles of knitting, so I haven't really decided which one. Because the new, like my old technique, I can do it without looking, so in that sense it's easier, and it's also, I think, a little bit faster. Um, the new technique, of course, it tightens up my pearl stitches, which is the good thing, but yeah, slower and I don't feel confident enough to to um, knit without watching, so maybe I'll switch between them depending on the project. And also another um, like issue I had with the tension um, is the difference between knitting flat and knitting in the round, and that's I think what's causing this sort of it flares out here a little bit because obviously up until this point you knit back and forth because it's open here but then when you add the stitches uh, for the front 
you start knitting in the round and that's when the gauge just increased quite a lot so I'm not very happy about that and I feel like it's it gets more and more ex exaggerated the more I wear it because like it's I mean here is where I have like all my hair for example so it feels like it stretches out every time I wear it um, so if I knit it again I would decrease my needle size for uh, when knitting in the round um, yeah but um, you know it's a, it's a small thing and you have these really cute eye cords for the um, you can tie them which is really cute yeah and that's it I think um, the, it was a good pattern I did not follow it exactly because I was a bit worried I didn't use the same yarns uh, as the recommended yarns so I thought that my and also I'm a, like a loose knitter so I realized that my gauge would be too big or like bigger compared to the patterns so I just like decreased a few stitches here and there or like I reduced the amount of stitches that I went with as opposed to the pattern so for example the pickups um, the cast on stitches that you start with um, maybe I uh, cast on two or three stitches left less than what was called for and uh, when I picked up uh, around here I also picked up a few stitches less etc so I I just made those kind of adjustments along the way and uh, I think the fit turned out okay it would be okay probably if I just followed the amount of stitches uh, that was recommended in the pattern so maybe it was unnecessary but it turned out okay anyway so I'm very happy about it and um, it was exactly the kind of project that I needed right there and then and sometimes you just have to like put everything aside and go with something that's easy and very soft. Um, I have one more project that I uh, have showed you. No, I have two projects that I have showed you before and that I have made a little bit of progress on. Oh, my hair. I just need to do something about this. Let's start with a... Let's start with um, some color work. And uh, not any color work, but some Hansestrik color work. Ta-da! So, last time I showed this, I think I had done maybe this much. So the foxes and the ribbing in the bottom. So a little bit of progress since last time, um, these are penguins, as you may be able to see, I'm almost done with this section, and this sort of uh, just a in-between section, I guess you could call it. And this is so much fun, um, I cast this on uh, when I didn't have any other color work uh, knitting um, to work on at the time. And uh, yeah, I love color work so much. So <laughs> these days I feel like I always need to have at least one color work project on the go at all times. So I cast this on from a Hans Strick book that I have, knitting book. Um, and uh, I went with something um, easy and quick. So I went with a child size sweater. I think this is is for like a two year old or something um, without like any intentions for it really just just to have something to to start knitting on fast but it's I love how it's turning out it's so much fun and it's fun to knit for um, a child because I can be a bit more risky in terms of choosing colors um, like the colors for the penguins like what is this color it's like a it's such a weird... Yeah, it looks very yellow in the camera. It's... I mean, it is yellow. But in some lightings it looks... It's such a weird yellow. It looks almost green, yellow, like lime. 
yeah, definitely some green tones in it. I don't know, and also this kind of yellow, um, purple, is maybe not my go-to color, I guess, for myself. But it works, it works nice here, I think. So I have, um, my plan for this is to just keep, um, keep uh, picking different sections as I go. I feel like now there's like an animal theme to it, so I guess I'll continue, continue picking the animals for it. Um, and I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like around ten colors. So I'll alternate those tens. Um, you know, as I go, I don't have, um, I don't have a plan really. I just, I just pick colors that I think will fit and the order, um, and just a random order, I guess. So I just wanted to show you a bit of progress on that, but it, this is not, yeah, I'm not stressing this or anything. This is not like the most prioritized project uh, that I'm working on. So I just pick this up whenever I want to knit a few rows of fun color work, I suppose. But it's, uh, I feel like the penguins definitely because it was a looking a little bit dark for a while, but now the penguins really makes it fun and bright. So very, very much enjoying this. And the other project that I've been working on a little bit since last time um, is a hat. And, and I had a bit of a break with this one um, just because I was I wasn't sure what to do with it. I was trying to figure out You know what kind of hat this would be um, This is what it looks like right now um, Now this pearl ridge won't be visible um, So I started knitting the Oslo Oslo hat um, For the brim basically so this is a double folded brim and uh, here's where it's sort of sewn onto, um, yeah, it's double folded here and sewn onto here. Uh, so I did that and then I wasn't sure, like, because the Oslo hat is stockinette all the way up to the top. And I felt like this is such a spring vibe hat. Uh, I wanted to do something a bit more fun and cute maybe I guess um, some kind of lace or cable stitch or just yeah I had a hard time deciding but this is what I'm trying out now and the Oslo hat is folded three times so uh, now it's folded or it's like folded two times I guess um, so now the first layer is folded and then I'm gonna fold it up again which will cover this, so just uh, ignore the pearl ridge here. But yeah, this is the texture I'm going with. This row is sort of a slip stitch, kind of like a brioche, how you knit brioche, but only for this one, uh, this one row here. And this is just like, uh, I think it's called like a faux cable. It almost looks like a cable, but um, yeah, it's like a a cable of two stitches, basically. So one is right-leaning and one is left-leaning. And I think this will look nice. Very, yeah, spring vibes. Um, I'm probably not the only one who's definitely feeling the spring vibes right now. Um, if you live in a country that's had a, a long and cold winter, um, as in Sweden. And in the last episode, I talked about the color showing up a bit weird in the camera. It's a really nice um, pop of color. And I'm using two strands of tin per gint at the same time to get sort of a DK weight. So hopefully in the next episode, this will be finished. I have no idea if this is my kind of color, but maybe. Uh, 
and I'm using 3.5 millimeter needles and I think the fit is good. I tried to not make it too snug because I have a couple of hats that are a little bit too small for me. I still wear them but maybe I would have preferred a little bit more relaxed fit. I think this will be exactly that so yeah. And now, finally, um, my new castons. And I have two of them that I want to show you. Uh, let's, I have the first one. Let's start with this one that I have right here. Um, am I sitting very, very low? I feel like I am. Let me adjust. There we go. And of course now I'm in the middle of a row, so this will be hard to show you. Hmm. Let's try. This is what I have. This is the back. And this is the front. And it's a cardigan, so it's open in the front. Now this is a little bit of an experiment. So a few years ago, a couple of years ago, I uh, convinced my mom to buy this pattern. It's called Marum Knitted Bomber. Um, when I first saw it, I really, really liked the pattern, and she had um, she bought yarn that was a perfect fit for that pattern. Uh, at the same time that I bought this yarn, actually. Um, but this yarn is not the perfect fit for that pattern, so I couldn't, I couldn't knit it, but she could, and she did, and uh, it turned out really nicely. So I have, I have been a little bit jealous, um, but I haven't really had the perfect yarn for the pattern, and then I just kind of forgot about the pattern, and yeah. Uh, and then fast forward to just like a month ago, <clears throat> I have tried to find something to do with this yarn. Uh, this is the yarn, uh, Dansk Pelsul, uh, from Jeholds Udspinneri. That's my, that's my Danish. <laughs> um, it's a really thin yarn, 400 meters per 100 gram. And uh, I have, uh, I had three skeins, so in total uh, 1,200 meters, which should be plenty to make you know, a lot of different things really. Um, I, you know, I didn't have to restrict myself to anything, you know, sometimes if you don't have a lot of yarn, maybe you can't really do cables, for example, because cables tend to use up a lot of yarn. But for this, like, I, I feel like I could have done a little bit of everything. Uh, this is how much I have left on my third, uh, on my first, first game. Um, but still I couldn't decide um, I didn't want to make, like I swatched actually in stockinette and um, yeah, I wasn't maybe, <clears throat> I wasn't like super happy about how it turned out. Uh, I swatched on three millimeter needles and I felt like maybe it was a little bit too thin, uh, turned out like uh, the fabric turned out really thin. And uh, also I felt like if I would knit something in just stockinette, I would have a lot of leftovers, which felt kind of unnecessary. Although it's a beautiful yarn, so I would easily find a purpose for it. But yeah, and then one day it just hit me. What if I'd make the modern knitted bomber with this yarn? Now, of course, um, like I said, this is not the perfect fit um, for that pattern. So I had, a, I had a look on the Ravelry projects uh, for this pattern and I found one other person who used fingering or maybe sport weight yarn. I think the pattern calls for DK or worsted, not sure. Um, so I decided to give it a go. So the first thing I did to translate the amount of yarn, or like the amount of stitches, 
that I would need was to knit the swatch and measure the gauge and then I calculated uh, sort of how many stitches I would need for the bust measurement and then I compared that to the sizing um, and picked a size that is larger than what I usually would pick if I had used uh, the recommended yarn or the recommended gauge. So that's step one. But I don't think that's enough because, um, for example, the neckline cast on stitches doesn't necessarily, like the proportions get a bit weird if you just pick a larger size because maybe, um, maybe you would need to have even more cast on stitches for the neck um, just because like the proportions between sizes for the neck is uh, not the same as the proportion for the uh, chest width, for example. I think. I haven't really like thought this completely through, but I, yeah, it, it feels like you can't really translate it directly. Um, but I did. So, so one thing that worries me a little bit is the neckline. So if I put this on, This was a mistake to be in the middle of the row. But I can sort of give you an idea. No, I can't really. Typical. Anyway, this looks really weird now. No, I can't show you. <laughs> because it's a bomber jacket fit, of course the neckline will be a bit higher than um, this uh, sweater for example so the neckline should go a bit a bit higher you know as a like a jacket usually um, as it usually does for jackets but i feel like this will go very high up because i maybe cast on a bit too few stitches if you if you see what i mean i just feel like the raglans are turning you know i will have to struggle with really making this fit in the front. It's hard to explain. Um, but yeah, I feel like maybe this will sit a bit too high in the end. Because of course on top of this I will need to pick up stitches for uh, the actual neckline. So we'll see. But I am... I'm still knitting on it and I still have faith. Like if I put it on me, I feel like the fit is turning out okay. I'm still increasing. Um, I will go up to like 400 stitches, uh, something like that. So a lot of stitches, it's a slow knit. Um, it's a broken rib stitch, which is really beautiful. But it takes a little bit of time and three millimeter needles, of course. So yeah. But I still feel like I have made <clears throat> I have made quite a lot of progress actually. It's not too bad. Yeah, maybe when I wear it like this you can see what I mean with the high neckline. I'm just hoping that that it will work out. Otherwise I'm just gonna have to solve it up here somehow. Yeah. Um like I said, it's a beautiful yarn. Let's have a little closer look. It's so fluffy, like, this is as fluffy as using silk mohair, pretty much, but this is 100% wool. I, I think that's quite amazing. And it's grey, but a very vibrant grey, as you can see. So, yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. But um, maybe not the most exciting knit. I guess. I, I mean, I'm usually all for colors and the color work. But I think this will be a not very complicated knit. So it's nice to have uh, just to pick up whenever and keep knitting. And you always need those kind of knits, right? And finally, let's talk about a new cast on that I'm very, very excited about. And this is definitely spring vibes again. Here we go. 
Ah. Let's see. This is this is the right side. This is what we have. A back panel. I am very excited about this. Uh, I got this yarn, also tin pergint. I received a lot of tin pergint uh, on Christmas, so I have uh, I have some of it in my stash now. Um, but this is one of the colors I got for Christmas, and I love yellow. Uh, I just don't really wear yellow that much. Um, but why not? I only have four skeins of this, so it could be enough for a sweater, but um, depending on what I wanted to do. But I got three skeins of this silk mohair from Slakta Stashen again, and uh, three skeins of this mohair, which uh, if I remember correctly, this was uh, some nest in. Um, What's it called? Tin silk mohair from Sunless. Yeah. Three skeins is about 600. Well, not. Uh, yes, yeah, between 600 and 700. Not even 700 meters. So I don't think this would be enough. No, th this would definitely not be enough for a sweater. Uh, because I wanted to pair them. And um, yeah, so I had to have a little think. At first, I wanted to go with a t shirt. Of some sort, maybe like a buttoned t-shirt, so like a t-shirt cardigan, I guess, um, in a very like cute and preppy style. But in the end I decided to go for a slipover, or a vest, more like it. I told myself I'm not gonna knit more slipovers because I have a few, but yeah, this is not a slipover actually, um, it's a vest. So I googled a little bit actually, uh, which is um, what I do sometimes, uh, just to like get inspiration from other types of clothing, uh, you know, it could be from like clothing stores or people that sew their own clothes, um, just to get inspiration from something else that is not knitting. And uh, I decided to go for a vest that is v-neck shaped, and I think I will make like long eye cords so that I can tie uh, ribbons um, to close in the front, maybe two or three uh, ribbons. And I wanted to have a thick texture, so I did a couple of swatches, or like I did a long swatch where I tried different textures. I didn't like the stockinette look, uh, I tried a few different uh, textured uh, stitches, or like textured. Um, types of knitting um, and in the end what I liked the most was this kind of weaved weaved look it really gives a uh, quite a thick fabric uh, thick and sturdy and I think that will look good for this kind of vest I don't know if this texture has a name maybe it's just called like the woven woven stitch or something what you do is basically on the right side you just knit, knit stitches and then on the wrong side you purl one, slip one with yarn in front and that's how you get this sort of... Um, now you can see the yarn running, uh, running every other stitch here and that's from... Um, yeah, slipping the stitch with the yarn in the back, so it will be visible on the on the front, basically. So because of the slipping of stitches, it's a it's a bit slow, because you don't make a lot of progress uh, in terms of rows, but you get the thick, sturdy fabric. You can almost see how sturdy it is. Like, it doesn't really have the same flow as it would if it was just stockinette. But I like it so much and uh, I think the size is just about right. Um, when it comes to vests or slipovers uh, it's not as critical, I think. 
I don't really mind if it goes out a little bit too long. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a nice look as well. So, um, yeah, I haven't decided on what I will do for the edges. I could do something similar to, to this double folded kind of edge or just some kind of ribbing. We'll see. It depends on how it will fit, I suppose, when it's, when it's done. Yeah, and uh, I'm using 4mm needles, my Knit Pro Cubics, as I always use when it comes to 4mm up to 8mm needles. Not that I knit on 8mm needles ever, basically. And I'm loving the yarn combination, I'm loving the color. Uh, it's, it's yellow, but the silk mohair definitely gives it a more muted, uh, muted look. Um, more like a dirty yellow or like a hay color or like a, the way grass looks in early spring before it turns bright green, you know? Um, so it will be fun to see how it turns out. And this is also a very comforting knit, um, thanks to the, to the silk mohair. And right now I'm keeping this um, next to my bed so that I can knit on it before going to sleep. So it's a very pleasant experience. Yeah, I feel like I am done here. Mm, that's a little bit of what I'm working on right now. I have a couple of more things, but they're not... Yeah, this episode will just be too big if I show everything. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you're also feeling the spring vibes that I've talked a lot about today. It's, uh, it will be interesting to see what happens with my knitting mojo. Usually it goes down quite a lot in the spring and summer. I, uh, I want this summer to be like the summer of sock knitting. Because I do want to knit socks, but I feel like I spend a lot of time knitting garments and that socks have sort of taken the back seat for a while now. So hopefully I'll be able to keep my mojo going for the summer and uh, that I can um, whip out a couple of socks. We'll see. But I'll be back here before summer, I hope. But until next time. Bye.